Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to its rainmaking time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me both pleasure and pain to welcome our guest, Dr. Carl Merritt. He is the president of the Dove Health Alliance, an electrical engineer, a biomedical engineer, a medical doctor, and he has a solid background in energy medicine. He has really investigated the depth and breadth of electropollution, microwave pollution, and what is happening now with the smart meters being installed throughout the United States of America. We're going to talk about the 1996 passage of the Telecommunications Act, Section 704. We're going to talk about the FCC's role in this, the health aspects of the smart meter, and why we need to pay attention to everything connected to the smart meter regarding our health. Welcome to the show, Carl. Thank you so much. I appreciate being with you today. We've done several segments on electropollution. We covered the book Zapped, the cell phone use for children, the amount of cell phone towers that are being built deeply concerns me. However, I really want to focus on the technology of the smart meters and why we need to pay attention to this. So I'm going to let you just have the floor right now. Talk to us, first of all, about the Telecommunications Act and how it connects to cell phone technology and the smart meter and anything in the wireless world. All right. Well, that's a a very big topic, but uh, let's start by sort of just defining uh, electricity from the perspective of um, Uh, alternating current electricity, which is what we use in our power grids, which is uh, low frequency, uh, actually extremely low frequency. It's in the range of about 60 cycles a second in America, 50 cycles a second in in the UK and in Europe. And um, we've been doing this since, uh, you know, the 1920s and 30s when we started basically creating electricity um, that... uh, was invented by Nikola Tesla, uh, the great Croatian inventor who came to America, worked with Edison, and then developed alternating current technology. That's how we get our power. But that, you know, power came with a certain uh, caution. Uh, Not only could you get electrocuted from it like you can if you put your hands on sockets, but uh, also this power... Uh, has uh, a magnetic field associated with it. And some of the latest studies we're finding now that women who are exposed to low-frequency power um, at uh, 60 cycle in pregnancy, if they're exposed to more than 2 milligauss, their kids have um, a a 3.5-fold increase in potentially having asthma. And asthma is now the... um, uh, 10% of kids have asthma in this country, and it's one of the leading causes of respiratory illness. So, you know, electricity has a uh, <clears throat> potentially adverse effect, especially if pregnant women are exposed to it. But what you're talking about is the uh, power in the radio frequency range, which is... Um, uh, many, many different frequency bands, and what's most concerning now is the microwave uh, radio frequency radiation that comes from all of our wireless devices, our cell phones, our cordless phones, and the most recent uh, addition to that is the um, smart meters, which unfortunately in this country uh, and uh, several other countries, but not all countries, is using microwaves to transmit utility usage information to uh, to the central headquarters of the utilities uh, via uh, various different relays that are put on poles and so on. And uh, in uh, in the history of this, this is part of what's called the smart grid. And the idea was that we should be able to monitor much more. Uh, uh, frequently that the amount of power usage so that we could adjust our, our usage patterns um, to uh, uh, know that as we're getting into the time when uh, cars are built with uh, charging stations at home and so on as electric cars, people want to know their power usage. The, re- the reason for that is that people can't really store up a power. Utilities really don't have huge banks of power, so they have to produce it 
and then regulate its usage uh, in the electrical grid. So the idea was actually not a bad one, uh, but what I uh, have issues with is that they didn't have to use microwaves to transmit this utility uh, power use information. Um, they could have done it like in Italy, where there are millions of homes, and they use meters developed here actually in California by Echelon Corporation to transmit this power usage information over the power lines directly to the utilities. Now, you know, it's um, all different ways of doing that. It's called power line communication, have advantages and disadvantages. I think um, using microwaves um, was considered the cheapest and easiest, and um, it was actually something that wasn't the way this program was rolled out in California, where we're dealing with this, but it's not being done in many other states. Uh, originally, I think when uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, the Northern California utility, um, wanted to do this, they um, asked the California Public Utilities Commission, the CPUC, for doing it, you know, I think as a wired system from what I gather from reading the documentation. And then as technology came online, they said, well, we can do this uh, using uh, microwave radiation um, from these so-called smart meters, and they would be installed then on every home, and that's really what's happened now. They've been pretty much rolled out a lot. There's a few communities have resisted that, and people really weren't informed about the potential impacts. They, in fact, uh, when the um, utilities were petitioned, they said there was really no health impact, and I think with a wired system, the health impact would be fairly minimal. But uh, then they changed it to using microwave uh, smart meters that work in a pulsed way. Uh, they send out a signal infrequently, uh, but consistently throughout the day and night. And there are high uh, power pulses that are on a very short period of time. And there's sort of like a flash gun going off or... or uh, um, you know, when when you drill with pneumatic tools, you get these these uh, pulses, and the pulses I think have a more adverse effect. But if you average the amount of power that they put out, and these put out about a watt or so uh, at a time, but very intense pulse, and then um, and then they are dormant again. So people have argued, well, this isn't a big problem because uh, you know it's not very much power going out. But a couple of things um, I think need to be. A, made aware of, number one, they didn't do any at all health impacts on, on any cell cultures, on animals, certainly not on humans. In fact, they didn't even know how much power would be fully uh, um, in the environment um, because, you know, you have to roll out the system first before you can do all the measurements. You can uh, tell how much a meter puts out um, at a time, and we can measure that with spectrum analyzers and so on. We're doing that now. But... Uh, it's, uh, I think, wrong to say that there would be potentially no health impact because those people who are electrically sensitive, they're, they're electrically hypersensitive. Some people have called that uh, membrane sensitivity syndrome and so on. Uh, these are the people who have complained that, you know, they feel like they, they uh, adversely affected their problems with memory, with headaches. Uh, some people have nausea, sleep disturbances. Um, all kinds of vague symptoms that are typical of these conditions, and it's estimated that about 3% of the population, and, and perhaps growing, um, now have this hypersensitivity to electrical fields, radio frequency fields, um, specifically microwaves and so on. And we do know from many, many uh, animal and, and cell culture studies and uh, so on over the last uh, 15 years that, uh, you know, these things are being affected at levels that are much lower than is considered to be um, as a guideline, you know, safe in this country. And, and to understand that, uh, we have to really go back into the, the whole history of how this all developed. I want you to go into the history, but I want you to just talk about microbolts microwave radiation, where it was maybe 20 years ago and where it is now, how different the levels are now, just so we have a context? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the um, this all really started rolling out in the 1980s. You know, prior to that, um, 
the background radiation in, in our 